Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker, where we are believing that God is going to break through in your life in every single area of your being. Listen, the Bible says that he is the Lord of the breakthrough. He is Baal Perazan. So expect God to show up and show off in your life today. Today, we have a very good friend, the one and only the revelator, Miss Kat Kerr on our show. And we're going to talk about how to walk in heavenly realms. We welcome you, Miss Kat Kerr. Thank you so much for being our friend, a friend of Jesus, and a guest on our show today. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really excited. Wow, praise God. Talk to us, man. Why are you excited? Why are you really excited? I mean, so many people, they're in doom and gloom and they're depressed, but why are you so excited? Talk to us. Well, because I'm well acquainted with heaven and, of course, the Father and His Son and Holy Spirit. It's like almost 24 hours a day. I, I'm with them, either in heaven or they're here on the earth. And especially since this is a very key time we're in, actually, it's not time to start again. Or in England, it's really not God setting everything up for the most powerful time to be on the earth. The manifested sons and daughters doing the greater works, carrying the glory and releasing it around the world. He's cleaning the slate of all the darkness. That's why it's being exposed so he can just wipe it out. And we've all helped with that, with your prayers, with your intercession, with your worship. It releases something in the atmosphere. Keep doing it. It's going to be amazing and marvelous what happens over the next couple months. And you may not want to hear that because, you know, I know this is going to be, well, February. Well, we should be well into what we're doing by that time. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> wow, incredible. And, and absolutely, God God is sitting on the throne and he laughs. He's laughing at his enemies. In fact, the Bible says in Psalms 2, why do the nations rage and conspire? You know, there's been so much talk recently about conspiracy theory. But why are the nations conspiring and God laughs? Why? Because he's in a great mood. In fact, his goodness is never just a mood, which is, you know, very situational. But he's always feeling good because he is good. He is God. Now, talk to us, Miss Cat, because God is happy, okay? So we should be happy. We should always be rejoicing and be expectant of miracles. But, you know, what should we be expecting about right now in this season? We should be expected to manifest for him in great ways and demonstrate the power of God uh, to this country especially, but also to the world that is watching us. And people need to be aware the world is watching us everywhere from almost every country. Many people are cheering us on, believing with us. There's millions of Christians right now around this world and they have great hope for what God is going to do in this country, regardless of what man thinks they're doing. <laughs> Absolutely. God has a higher plan and a greater plan. Yes. And expect great things from God. He's far from being done with you, this country. And we know and we're standing that America is the apple of God's eye. We're yes. believing for that. And uh, Miss Kat, you know, uh, today we're talking about walking in heavenly realms. And of course... You know, I love what Prophet Hank Kuhneman said. Of course, I was watching on Flashpoint, uh, and he said that when you were with him at his church, I mean, there was such a realm around you, and that's one of the reasons why we love you so much is because there's realms. I mean, you really walk with God, and you are really with him in those realms. And there's people watching today and are saying, I want to be like Kat. I want to walk in heavenly realms just, just as she does. Uh, you know, you've been to heaven thousands of times. How do we get to that place where just in any average Joe, any believer, any son, daughter, child of God can walk in heavenly realms 24-7? Well, I will always tell people this. The greatest delight in your life needs to be Jesus Christ. Um, what I do, I do for him and with him and because of him. You know, I don't consider myself. I, I am a believer. I am a child of God. Uh, his father is my father, and I delight in that. And my greatest um, thing is to please him. And you have to have not just that as a mindset, but it has to be your heart set, that your heart is set on him and what he wants in your life because, you know, the devil, he'll control everybody, and there's other humans out there that want to control people or use people. That's what the devil's MO is, but God's is not. He loves us. He has great plans for us. 
And really, the more surrendered you are to God, what does that mean? You give him his will, his way, not his will, your way. I think one of the greatest things I ever learned was to allow him to do what he wants to in his own time and not try to pressure him. I never ask him, well, what time is it? How long will it take? When can we expect this? I don't say those words to him. I celebrate who he is. I recognize who he is. And I'm excited to be about his plans right now in this world because he timed our birth on the earth. And you are important or you wouldn't be here. He doesn't make a mistake when somebody is sent from heaven to earth and to do great things for him. Everybody gets to make a choice in their life. And it's very important that you learn to choose the things of God and not the things of man. You certainly have to live in this world and you can do it and have a good time doing it. People should see you happy. They should see you enjoying yourself. If you're a believer and we represent heaven, and actually that's what we do, we represent heaven on this earth. That means we need to live like they do. We need to think like they do. We need to make choices like they do. Don't get caught up in the doom and gloom or fear or hate. Those things belong to the enemy, and that's what the enemy uses to bring people down, to crush them, push them back. And when you see governments doing that, those people work for the enemy. They do not represent God. And I have been many places in this world, and I have found wonderful people everywhere. All I have to say is usually the leaders, the, the leaders are the cause of anything uh, that goes wrong in countries, and people are oppressed themselves, and they don't want to be oppressed. They want to be free. That's why people love America. They love the hope that that they know that America will, it belongs to God and it's going to be greater than it was before, and it will be. And those are exactly what God's plans are. The more you walk in the Spirit, and this is the key, if you're going to walk in heavenly realms, you better start walking in the Spirit first. When you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of your flesh. That's your rights, your opinions, your wants, no matter what anyone else thinks. You know, you just crush people and walk over them trying to show them this is what's right and I don't want anything else, that's called your flesh. Well, to be fleshly minded is death. That means there's no hope in it, there's no life in it. But to be spiritually minded, that is life. That is God. That's what he chooses. And therefore, you need to walk in the spirit as a lifestyle. People think that means, well, I'll choose something good this day, but this day I'm going to do what I want to. It doesn't matter if I hurt people or say wrong things to people. Uh, that's not walking in the spirit, okay? Walking is a spirit and is staying on a path. It's a way of life, and that's how I live. Therefore, I'm always open to hear the spirit and respond to the spirit. It's really not some, some strange, weird thing. It's what you have decided in your own soul to become. Who are you pleasing? Who do you want to be like? That should be Jesus Christ. And so that's how I live all the time. And my, my um, discernment has become so super um, extreme, really, in many ways. And I know when I started my life out, I was pretty much, I can't say ordinary. I was, my mom always said I was strange every day of my life because I was a seer, number one. So I would see things and talk about those things. Even when I was little, you know, God was real to me. When I got born again at age four, I literally saw Jesus step inside of me. Now, this is a four-year-old. Wow. So you can see why my life has been different, but I still chose him. You make a choice every day. People say, well, I chose Christ, but do you choose him every day? Are you surrendered? Have you surrendered your will to his will? Because there's no better place, more exciting place, uh, actually more adventurous place to be is to follow Christ, surrender your life, lay down your life, and find it in Him means you live the way He needs you to live. He wants you to make a difference in this world, but if you're full of yourself, or you're angry all the time, upset all the time, confused all the time, or fearful all the time, you're not going to be able to accomplish those things with Him. You don't have to keep any of those things inside of you. He didn't. When you were born again, all of that stuff was wiped out of you. What you choose to watch, what you choose to hear, what you choose to say makes you the person you are. And you can be a believer, born-again believer, but the witness and testimony of your life may not line up with what a believer is supposed to look like.
always keeping myself accountable and, uh, you know, to, to the Father or to the Spirit of God. I actually say I give you permission to show me anything that I need to change. That's a good place to start right there. If you've already asked Christ in your life, why not start connecting with them, have a conversation with them? Even if you don't see them, they're there. So first you make a choice for Christ, and then after that you will choose every day of your life whether you're going to go towards him, sit still and do nothing, or go the opposite direction. You don't want to do that. So you need to learn about walking in the Spirit first and make that a lifestyle of joy, of surrender, of adventure and excitement. And I tell people, if you're stuck in a place right now where you're upset, you're confused, or you're sad, you need to say, I choose as an act of my will to lose all the confusion, all the fear, all the anger from my soul in Jesus' name because you can't even think straight. And that also interferes with hearing when Jesus is trying to talk to you. If you've got soul clutter, I call it soul clutter, if you've got all kinds of stuff in there, you're not going to hear as well. So make sure that your soul is clear. Make sure that you're you're in a place where you want to hear him and even say, Jesus, I want to know you more. I want to bless you. I love these words. Say these words now. I want to be just like you. You don't know how delighted. I remember the first time I said that to the Father. I want to be just like you, Father. I want to be like your son who loves you, who runs after you, who wants to delight himself in you. That's what I want to do. And I remember I could feel the excitement of God the Father when I said, I want to be just like you. Doesn't every child want to be like the Father? Doesn't it say in the Word that we are made in their image and after their likeness? Their image means that, guess what? They have a body. They have a head. They have arms. They have legs. Even if they're invisible, they have them. But their, but their likeness is not their image. We're made... In their image and after the likeness, their likeness is how they operate. So if they operate in joy and celebration, and guess what? Creativity increases. There's no way you can miss being great for him if you're running after those things. So number one is Jesus. Number two, you make sure that your priorities are right. Make sure your soul, you keep that junk out of it. Make sure you're watching and making a decision about what you want to see, what you watch goes in your soul, what you listen to goes in your soul. And what you say yourself goes into the soul of the people you're talking to, but it goes in your own soul. So if, you're, if you don't like yourself, why don't you change what you're saying about yourself? Because God has great plans for you. All of this is about walking in heavenly realms on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, they have no anger, no lack, no fear. Uh, there's no oppression in heaven. They celebrate all the time. They enjoy each other's company. The creativity flows in heaven like you have never even imagined. And so there are things you can do to help accelerate your direction towards that. Number one, what is your priority? What is, your, what is the thing you want the most? The best answer would be more of Jesus Christ. I will tell you this, he was the most exciting person in his day. There was nothing boring about Jesus. He was a real showman. And you may not like me saying those words, but you don't really know him if you don't know that about him. He put a show on in hell and made, it, made sure everybody knew who he was and what was going on, who was in charge, wiping up hell and on the third day. That was a show. When the Father had a show in heaven, he kicked out all of evil, sent them out on lightning bolts. There you go. There's action, right? There's light action. <laughs> Let me tell you, we represent his character, his person, his power. These are things that are available to every believer, no matter where you are right now. If you made a mess of your life, you made a mistake, go repent. Get all the junk taken out of you and get ready for the greatest days in your life. Nothing is ended right now. We're right now in a place and a position that God is touching this earth. I mean, he's walking on this earth. I remember when we heard reports, but see, I already know his stuff that he's doing. I mean, a lot of it he shares with me before it happens. I love it when he does that. You know, and the prophets who are, I believe, two prophets of God, and know him well, would never step back. They would never abandon what God's plan was because it didn't work out in their own mind. You can't put God in a box. You can't make him be what you want to be. 
He's going to do things in his own way and in his own time. So even when you see this, when you see this message, things might not have been made perfect the way you want them to, but trust me, behind the scenes, in the natural, but also in the spirit realm, there's so much activity going on with heaven coming down to earth and sending uh, beings out on assignment to fulfill things, to put on strongholds, shred platforms that Satan's ruling from in different areas and regions of our country and even over people. You must understand, heaven, you may not hear them, but the activity is very powerful right now because God is positioning us to be something great for him in this earth. Wow, that is incredible, man. Uh, one thing I love uh, about you is that you just flow and flow and flow because this is who you are. You're connected to the Father. You're moving and operating from that realm right now. And I know so yeah. many of our friends, our viewers that are watching right now, they're wanting to walk in those same realms. And it's available. Even as Miss Kat Kerr said, make Jesus your priority. Clean out your soul. Uh, begin to empty yourself of yourself so that you can be a pure vessel for the Lord and watch what God does as you begin to love those around you. Now, uh, Miss Kat, I know you've been to heaven multiple times, and uh, obviously there's a glory and there's a glow about you. You know, I mean, you have the fountain of youth, right? And uh, so it's because you've encountered Jesus and you walk with him and you've gone to heaven. And, you know, uh, there are so many uh, bitter prophets, so many grumpy apostles, and so many people that complain and are naggy, rather than happy and joyful. Uh, I want to ask you, Matt, uh, you know, what are some things that you've seen in the heavenly realms? Uh, what are some things that you've experienced? And obviously, it transformed us. Unfortunately, too many people, quote unquote, experience things but it doesn't transform them because there should always be fruit. What kind of fruit? It should make you more like Jesus. It should make you love the word of God more. It should make you love righteousness and fear God and hate evil. These are the fruits of genuine encounters with God and heavenly encounters. But what are some things that you've seen and you've experienced even recently in your journeys up to heaven? One of my favorite places to be, of course, is the throne room of God. And even saying that, he has more than one. I know people get surprised. It talks about the commissioning throne room. That's different from what I call the general or the main throne room. The main throne room is massive. It's the one with the living creatures surrounding the throne. The seraphim dip down out of the glory cloud over the throne. Their heads are on fire with blue fire. That's the passion of God himself. That living rainbow moves in and out. If you've ever seen um, any videos or have been present when the northern lights were there, where you see the waves moving in and out uh, or making waves, that's what it's like to be um, near his throne. You see these gorgeous colors coming out of him. That rainbow is living. It's living and it's alive. And I think one of the most significant things is every time I see a rainbow outside, I know what that's representing. It's a part of him. It's part of his image. And he does things with that rainbow. He actually will take a band of that rainbow in heaven from the throne room. He'll pull that band, one of the bands of the color, and he'll throw it out into heaven and it will wind its way through heaven until it finds the person he wants. It wraps itself around them and brings them back to him on the throne. Now, I can tell you, he could just make a simple statement and call them, but why not demonstrate majesty? It talks about wonder and splendor, but that you've been there, you don't really know what that means. This, is a, this story is a good example of some of the things I've seen happening in the throne room. People celebrate and worship so much, they're caught up off the floor and actually are worshiping in the air and in, inside the throne room. It's a beautiful place. People picture worship as something boring. They have something in heaven called living worship. No matter where you are in heaven, you're going to worship him. When you see what he's created for you, when you can see your mansion, all the things that are possible there, it is a beautiful, adventurous, exciting place to live. And I love this time on the earth because God calls this a time for heaven on earth. And people will say that. They have no clue what they're saying. 
the hunger and the love that is in heaven for the Father, for the Son, for Holy Spirit is unmatchable. I've not seen that kind of love yet on the earth. I believe it is coming. Uh, to hunger, to be with them, to be near them. And everyone in heaven is like that. There's no jealousy. There's no coveting in heaven. Everybody wants everyone else to experience that. I think another thing that's real beautiful is that the Father can actually spend time alone with you. And he wants to. This is in heaven. You know what? He can even do that on the earth. You remember in the Word, his son would go to the mountains to visit with him. Even when Jesus walked on this earth, he is your father. No matter whether your father that you had on the earth was a good person or not, the father is good. And actually, Jesus said he's the only one that is good. How about that? His goodness you talked about is something that is... um, it, it is something not just that you feel or think about. It's something that penetrates you and consumes you. And, and the most wonderful experience you get to have in heaven while he's releasing his goodness to you. But he's starting to do that on the earth. And I tell people, you should say, Father, I ask for your goodness. Show me your goodness, Father. And you don't do anything to qualify for that. Why, why wouldn't somebody want to live a surrendered life? He holds our future in his hands because time isn't somewhere and he's somewhere. Time itself comes from him. How about that? He put you here for a purpose. You shouldn't have fear in you. Fear comes from the enemy and fear is torment. And even right now on the earth, not just in America, but in many places, people have torment because of fear. And yet the enemy, that's one of his images. You know, he loves to use fear. Don't let fear interfere in your life. I tell people, open your door, kick it out in Jesus' name, and say you're not tolerating it, and you're not participating with it. There's actual things in your life right now, this moment, that you can be changed, beginning to change the atmosphere around you as a person and the place you live in. So you need to know that God has given us so many things in his word and by his spirit. But these days are really supernatural, special to live in because he is going to move things. Uh, He's going to show his hand on our behalf. He's going to set things in place for the next 100 years. There you go. I just saw it out there. You may have in your mind when you think the end is coming, but guess who knows? The Father does. And there's way too many things left he has to do. The word talks about we haven't experienced yet. You are in some of the greatest times to really begin to manifest for the Father. When I say that, I'm talking about like stopping an earthquake and making it put it back the way it was before it came. That's called a greater work. Now, these are the things that are about to come on this earth. Why would God let the devil have our country when he has prepared, been preparing America for many generations to start to operate like that, to be examples to the body of Christ and other nations, that this is what it means to be a son or daughter of God. We, we're above, not beneath. We're, we get to be great for him, not so we can glory in it, but so we can actually create glory for him. And when you see heaven's viewpoint and perspective, when you walk in those realms, you will begin to see it all the time. You won't have just man's mindset or man's plans. And I know you live in this natural realm. Guess what? This natural realm is, the, is not the eternal realm. We're, we're, we're entering into days where more and more the veil between the spirit realm and the natural realm is going to get very thin. Why not spend your time now preparing for those things coming on the earth? that people will see God's power demonstrated to us. That's why his son came and died for you. So these aren't normal days, and they're certainly not the perilous times. These are not the times of tribulation. This is the day of his son's power when we get to do amazing, powerful things for him. So look forward to your life with anticipation, and every morning get up and say, Father, I thank you for letting me be on the earth this time. Thank you for your son and the sacrifice. Thank you for Holy Spirit who can lead and guide me. I'm excited. I choose to be excited. I choose to be happy regardless of the situations around me. 
I'm running after you. I want to be just like you. And you will be shocked to see what you begin to experience after you make that decision. Wow, that's incredible, uh, Miss Kat. You know, I, I really feel like, again, there's a word, even for America, I love what you said earlier, that uh, even a hundred years, the, only the father knows. And there's so much fear about, is this the end times, vaccinations, quarantine, all of these things that's taken place. But God is saying, I'm not done, even with America. Now, in, in the next few minutes, man, I want to ask you, as you have walked with the Lord, even in the heavenly realms, what has God shown you for America, for this country, the United States of America? He calls America his gift, his gift to humanity. He knows his son came and died. That was a personal gift from the Father. But America is a special gift that will impact this world for him. A place where you can come to know him. And that's what he's actually doing right now. He is actually uh, moving upon leaders of governments, even this government. You know, we had a great leader. And I can tell you, his time isn't up, no matter what anyone says. And God adamantly says that he will put Trump back in the White House. No matter what anyone says or anyone thinks, he was chosen for eight years to do great things here in this country. He knows God. He welcomes God literally to our country. And when the head of a nation welcomes God, there's no way you can not escape being great. And so great days are coming for America. In this season we're in now is all about exposure of the darkness. And let me tell you, the Father is very good at doing that. He's going to expose the darkness in every level and every area of society. He's going to show and reveal what has been hidden for years, but in this time, it cannot help but be exposed. The crime, the fraud, God said nobody will escape being brought to justice. And they will be forced, talking about the news, will be forced to say these words. Trump has legally won the election, and he is the president of the United States for four more years. I was taken forward in time. I saw that happen. Thank God showed me in time, a little bit in time, people running out of their homes everywhere in this country, in America, out of restaurants, out of businesses, grabbing one another, laughing and crying and celebrating because great victory had come to America and also for Jesus Christ. God is going to have his way. His son is going to have his day. And let me tell you, it's not over. The show is just beginning. You better hang on because no matter where we are, by the time this happens here in February, he is working his plan. And this country will not go down the tubes. He's not throwing it away to China. He's not throwing it away to hell. He is going to make this country filled with his presence, filled with his purposes until people will come into America for one reason. And that is to know the living God. So days ahead are going to be great. Celebration is going to happen. Creativity will so increase. He won't allow the creativity to happen now with wicked people in place that will not remain there. How do I know? God said so. On November the 4th, he said these words. When the ground begins to shake, that's the earthly ground and the spiritual ground. When the ground begins to, to quake, watch for the landslide to begin of extreme fraud, crime, and corruption. From the smallest criminal to the highest in the land, they will all be brought down. Justice will be given, and Trump will be put in the White House for four more years. No matter when that happens, I want to encourage you, don't give up. It may take a couple weeks. It can take a couple months. But the whole time, God is working out that plan until he can get everyone where he needs them. And also in the natural, where people who are working on this also, when they've got everything they need, you capture those who have done wrong, you're going to know it. This is what God said. It will not be hidden when it starts. Everyone will know this is happening. 
even the news and the networks will be, this is what he said, they will be forced to broadcast mm. the crime and corruption that has been exposed will shock and stun people to see who they colluded with overseas to overthrow this government. Everyone's going to know who did it and what they did. And in the end, the only thing left that they can do is give the presidency to Donald Trump because he won on November 3rd in uh, 2020, 2020. And uh, with oh, almost 80 million votes is what he had before they shut everything down and began to do the stuff that was hidden. They're not going to get away with it. So this is a great time to be here. America will prosper beyond because God is in our country. What you ever imagined it could be, those are the days coming. And God said, you need to start celebrating right now and not wait till you actually see that happen. That's called faith. My gosh, Miss Cat, I'm jumping uh, in the spirit right now. I, I feel like my spirit man is leaping out of my, my body, you know, as, as the Bible says. And I just see and feel the angels just rejoicing and clapping and, and shouting like they're Pentecostal because, <laughs> because you are speaking the very words of God. And only those people who know God and walk with him on earth as it is in heaven can say his words. Jesus himself said. The son hears what the father says and only says what the father is saying. Miss Cantor, we thank you so much for joining us today on The Breaker. And I know today as you share, just pour out your heart like rivers, as you pour out your heart to us, that we will all begin to walk in the heavenly realms. We will have authority here on the earth. We are the people of God. The Bible says the people of God are glad for we are in Zion where there's streams and rivers of gladness. And, and man, we love you. We appreciate you. And thank you so much today for coming on The Breaker and just imparting and releasing and for talking to us about how to walk in heavenly realms. God bless you. You're we welcome. love you, man. And thank you so much for coming on the show today. God bless you too. Wow. Don't you love the one and only Miss Kat Kerr. She truly is a friend of God. She truly is a sign and a wonder. And wow, weren't you so blessed about today's broadcast, Walking in Heavenly Realms. This is just a snippet. I know just like you, uh, I wanted so much more. I didn't want this broadcast to stop. That's why you can follow her at her website. You can follow her on YouTube and on Facebook and all of the platforms. People of God, this is Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker, where God is breaking through in every area of your life, especially in your country and the United States. God is far from being done. It was our honor and privilege to have you and Miss Kat Kirk today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.